Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, bless your name, Jesus. Father, we just bless your name, O God. We give you the glory. We give you the honor, O God, that is due unto you, O God. We just welcome you, Holy Spirit, in this place, God. Let your glory rest on us tonight, O God. God. Hallelujah, Lord. I thank you, God. Father, open up our understanding. Give us more wisdom and knowledge as we dive into this word on tonight, oh God, teaching on what is transcend. Father, we ask you right now, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, Father, clear every air, airways, oh God. Father, we bind up the principality of the air in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that everything runs smoothly. We put it under the blood of Jesus right now in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Father, I thank you for everyone that's coming in to the class, oh God. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, give them, give them more, more, more of you, more, more. Let them thirst, thirst after your holiness and your righteousness, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. And we seal it with the blood of Jesus as you begin to hide me behind the cross, oh God. Allow me to decrease, oh God, in order for you to increase even the more that you get the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen. Well, good afternoon, good evening as well. Just want to welcome you all tonight as well to our class called Kingdom Building uh, Book Club. So we actually, every um, couple of months, we get uh, a different book and we study out of and pretty much um, learn so much from uh, very good authors that's out there uh, that's teaching on kingdom. So it's so important that we learn about the kingdom principle so we can be able to apply, so we can be able to be effective in God's kingdom. Amen. So the book that we're coming out of tonight is called The Seer's Dimension with Prophet Jennifer LeClaire. So it's not too late to order your book. I think we got, what, maybe three more weeks before we were done with this book. And then we're actually going to be taking a vote uh, today. Uh, or the next class on what book that we want to come out of. And as Liz going to actually put down uh, the books, uh, the name of the books, the one of the books um, we're going to look to um, possibly take a vote on tonight. The first book is called The Authority of the Believer, The Authority of the Believer, and it's by John um, Mac Macmillan. So that's M A C M. I L L I A N. Okay. And then the other book we're looking to um, possibly uh, look into is called o Open Heavens. Uh, Open Heavens is a guide to close fellowship with God, and that's the value 19. Again, that's Open Heavens, a guide to close fellowship with God, and that's value 19. That's Pastor E period a a da boy that's a d e b o y e that's a d e b o y e okay and then the third book that we may be possibly looking into is called the war of the saints the war war of, on the saints i'm sorry war on the saints and that's the that's by Jesse, J-E-S-S-I-E, Pen, Pen, P-E-N-N, Dash Lewis. Okay. So Liz writing those uh, books in for me. Uh, we're going to take a vote tonight before the class. Uh, we'll, we'll decide on which book it is. And I have to look at the reviews uh, and see if this is something that and that's Lewis, uh, not not like uh, St. Louis, but L E Lewis, L E W I S. And I apologize, Liz. And the other one was, was Pastor E. Period A. Last name is A D E B O Y E. Well, she's close to it on that one. So A D, yeah. 
All right, so we're going to go ahead and, well, good evening, Sister Alicia. God bless you, woman of God. How are you? How are you? It's good to see you. Good to see you. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and um, talk about last week's lesson. Last week's lesson, we talked about... God. Oh, how to enter the courts of heaven, how to enter into the courts of heaven. And, uh, and I gave some notes on that as well. So if you have any uh, feedback or on that, please uh, mute and share with me what you got from last week's lesson in the book, uh, the two lessons that we read on last week. Okay. Ready, Liz? Uh, yeah, but I was giving and giving people a chance to get giving people a chance. And last week's lesson was called "Act Like You Act Like You Seated in the Heavenly Places." The verse was Ephesians two and six. Ephesians two and six. He has risen up from the dead along with Christ and seated with Him in the heavenly realms, because we are united with Christ. Ephesians two and five ephesians two and five by grace we are saved in the in the future then we will be seated along with christ in the heavenly places come to in faith in christ romans 8 37 through 39 romans 8 37 through 39 and nothing is able to set us apart from the love of christ and that god has the real love the agape love genuine love first john 5 13 1 John 5, 13. Then that believers to know that to become confident in that we have eternal life and that once you accept Christ as your Savior, you are converts, full range in our hearts, full control, and that accepted into the kingdom of God and that start looking to Christ and stop conforming to the world and that Jesus already demonstrated on how we are supposed to walk, read the Bible, and apply it. And the idea of heavenly places is only mentioned in Ephesians, Ephesians 1 and 3. Ephesians 1 and 3, and that praise to God and the Father of our Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Ephesians 1, 20, Ephesians 1, 20, and Ephesians 3, 10, Ephesians 3, 10, and that God should be made known in the rulers and the authorities in the heavenly realms. Ephesians 6, 12, and that Ephesians 6, 12, and that we struggle not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and against the principalities and authorities and the powers of the dark world and forces of evil as well and that we have to learn how to fight in the spiritual realm and that what is the heavenly dimension and that we can come into his agreement by faith and action this allows heaven to manifest on earth and when it's the evil realm we are to undo it rebuke and rebuke the legal right and that heaven operation in the natural realm and that we must be realize that whenever the spiritual dimensions are unseen realm we must have an agreement with someone in the same realm to come into the place. John 3 and 6, John 3 and 6, natural gives birth to natural, and that spiritual gives birth to spiritual. And that the first heaven is on earth, and the second heaven is where Satan's throne and fallen angels, really unholy. And that the third heaven is where God is on the throne in heaven, and, and, and that Jesus is in the same spiritual mansion. And that Christ invited us to cross over the current earthly can't remember. Sorry about that. And then heavenly dimension is with the same dimension that Christ and his apostles walked in, where healings are performed and find all the power that Christ promised us. John 3 and 13, John 3 and 13, and that no one has ever gone to heaven except for the one who came from heaven and the son of man, speaking where his heart and his mind and his spirit, speaking on a heavenly being and how do we access that dimension? Let's cross. Then Psalms 34, 9 through 10. Psalms 34, 9 through 10, meditate on his word and on his promises. Those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. We must believe his words. Faith has always been the key. And how does one approach the invisible superior being except through belief and faith? Hebrews 11 and 1, Hebrews 11 and 1, and that faith is the assurance of all things hoped for. Sincere faith and that that can enter into you simply to step forward by faith. And that faith and stand into a heavenly dimension. Second Corinthians one and twenty. 
2 Corinthians 1 and 20, just believe and have faith, and that Moses was appointed to build a tabernacle in the wilderness, prophetically reveals that Jesus will work on the cross. And they talk about the shoe bread, and that God tore the veil from the top down, and that priest was the only one that could enter into the Holy of Holies, worship and intercede. And then he made mention of Leviticus 24, 1 through 9, Le Leviticus 24, 1 through 9, and that being full able and that we are not limited mercy seat between the wings of the cherubim and that the priest could enter and make atonement once a year. You got to be a believer and, and that only believers can enter in the Holy of Holies and that Hebrew declares that we will have full confidence to enter into holy place, full assurance of faith and that you draw near by faith and then we can boldly stand before God in the heaven and worship him and that we can access the promises and blessings and bring them to the earthly dimensions by activating our faith and that Jesus taught us to pray for his kingdom to come to earth and that we have a garden and that our garden is a place of our heart and that there are four chambers of the heart, will, intelligence, spirit, and emotions, a new heart, a million dollar heart, and that we have to have a humble heart, Psalms 51, 1 through 10, Psalms 51, 1 through 10, a believing heart, Romans 10, 9 through 10, Romans 10, 9 through 10, that we confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, and that confess with your mouth and that faith are saved, a loving heart, 1 Peter 1 and 8, 1 Peter 1 and 8, even though you have not seen him, you love him, and an express, an inexpressible joy, the next one was an obedient heart, See Ezekiel 36, 26 through 27, Ezekiel 36, 26 through 27, and that gives you a new heart and put a new spirit in you, and that will move you to follow my decrees, learn to fellowship with God, open the door to our hearts and a garden of our heart, and not let the glory come in, you will rule with the throne of your life as you surrender and rule alike to him. He starts to give you a a new heart to move in authority to trust things on the earth as in heaven and it gives us a throne with him start exercising that lordship over your uh, lordship on your own spirit gates your body gates and your soul gates and getting gates and open and flowing and that the spirit of god will start manifesting through through you and then and through everybody's life so you can continue to sleep, step out in the realms of the heaven, the glory realm, and that the glory realm is an atmosphere space above the throne. Yeah. And we're going to keep one of them so I can capitalize on the money. Okay. I'm, 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 I'm going to get you under this. Wait a minute. Okay, she on mute. All right. Okay. Go I was ahead. like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Lisa was not on mute. I'll try to put on. I could put on mute. There we go. No, fine. Oh, hi, Miss Lisa. Uh, and the, the glory is an atmosphere, space above the throne, and that glory is proximity. Walking in glory requires an abundant revelation of the nearest of nearness of God. And that the sweet and sense of intimacy of an experience into the glory realm and the fragrance of God's presence and the manifest death of the glory realm. And that angels dwell in the glory realm in unusual, shocking things. Authentic glory does not give you an unusual experience. I think I said wait, with that right. And that bring unusual freedom into your life. Psalms 1, 5 through 7. Psalms 1, 5 through 7. Wait, Psalms 105, 30, 37 through 35 through 37. Psalms 105, 35 through 37. And that God led his children out of slavery in bondage with a cloud of fire. And that this realm of glory brings forth an uncommon deliverance. As the glory of God in in this space and demonstrate and demonic bondage falls like a stack of dominoes and that the glory realm is where you were let out found supernatural health life miracles healings are common in the glory realm and also provision and financial miracles we need both the fire and the glory we need the cloud of god peace and presence and that glory is multiplying as well and that when you enter the glory exit to limitations on earth that there is a miracle dimension Natural law is subject to the law and the authority of God. In this dimension, bondages can fall away. Disciples were changed to minister from this dimension. The ambassadors of the kingdom, Matthew 10, 5 through 8, Matthew 10, 5 through 8, 
and then instructions to articulate and also demonstrate. Ministering from that kingdom jurisdiction, authority releases a strong flow of miracles. When we know who you are, we are able to manifest the power of God and that miracles are, are connected to our identity. Mark 5, 38, Mark 5, 38, and how the daughter of Jairus and that Jesus saw the girl was asleep and that Jesus was speaking from another dimension, an essence of a com conversion of two spiritual forces, prophetic anointing and the spirit and the spirit. Faith sees things as finished. Hebrews 11 and 6, Hebrews 11 and 6. What comes out of your mouth, we want to allow that thing to, we don't want to allow that thing to enter the spirit realm and watch your, watch your mouth and get it under the blood rebuild in that thinking of Elijah first Kings 18 first Kings 18 that miracle should not be uncommon ecclesia miracles are the fruit of the evidence of our position in the kingdom several gateways that bring the miracle realm into the earth realm partner with the Lord and stand in faith acts of obedience and that when the Lord stirs our heart into action we move kingdom results are unlocked Second Kings seven and three, Second Kings seven and three, angelical assistance. Thank God for angels assisting us. Psalms thirty four and seven, Psalms thirty four and seven. Angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear Him and delivers them. And how the angel of the Lord are on assignment to minister to the people of God. Second Kings six and seventeen, Second Kings six and seventeen. Angel armies are sent. God sent angels to assist Daniel in the lion's den, shutting the mouth of the lions and shut the enemies black and adopt a heavenly mindset. Romans 12 and 2, Romans 12 and 2, and that we should be transformed by the renewing of our mind and don't conform to the things of this word of this world. Start stepping into the spiritual realm. Start seeing or hearing what God is trying to show us and that we shouldn't let our minds be, we shouldn't let our minds be shaped by the present world. Our mindset needs to be changed on a daily basis and that we need to focus our thoughts to the right, on the right things. Philippians 4 and 8, Philippians 4 and 8. And that when a negative thought comes in, throw it back out, return it to sender and acknowledge your dependence on God and that we need God's help. God is the only one that can help us and that God is the only one that can help us change. Philippians 2 and 13, Philippians 2 and 13, that God is who works in you will, t will to do will in order to fulfill his good promises, good promises and purposes. We want to be able to overcome sinful habits with God working in us through us. Galatians 5, 6 through 7, 16 through 17, Galatians 5, 16 through 17, and that the flesh desires and fleshly desires is contrary to the spirit and let the Holy Spirit be your help. John 14, 17, John 14, 17, and how the Holy Spirit dwells in every child of God. And that this will help, this will help keep our mind on heavenly things. It will teach us and remind us of the word of Christ. John 14, 26, John 14, 26, and that the word of Christ dwells in us. John 14, 26, John 14, 26, the assurance that we are children of God. Romans 8, 18, Romans 8, 18, and Romans 8, 26, Romans 8, 26, and that the, the Holy Spirit is interceding on our behalf and that we are all in that we always don't know what we are praying for. God knows and that he is guiding us in all faith. Acts 1 and 8. X one and eight, and that ask the Holy Spirit to help us to discern to seek important things. John fourteen sixteen, John fourteen sixteen. Consult with the Holy Spirit. Resist the devil. James four and seven. James four and seven. Resist resist the devil as Jesus did. Luke four thirteen. Luke four thirteen, and that we need to be aware of the strategies of the devil, so because he does not fight fair. First Peter five and eight. First Peter five and eight. We need to resist the devil, focus our minds on the things above, put on the full armor of God daily. It's not a one time, one and done. Ephesians 6, 10 through 12, Ephesians 6 through 12, and Matthew 4, 3 through 11. Matthew 4, 3 through 11. And keep in mind, prayer is a, a key element in battle. Ephesians 6, 18, Ephesians 6, 18, and that we have to guard our hearts. Proverbs 4, 23, Proverbs 4, 23. And that the heart is a center of will, 
feelings, and desires. Protect our minds from the from worldly things, and that by exposing and expressing by exposing ourselves to ungodly things, ignite temptations. Matthew twenty six forty one. Matthew twenty six forty one. Let go of your old self and let go of your ungodly self. Ephesians four twenty two. Ephesians four twenty two. Now we have to put our old self off and our old sinful nature and put on your new self. Second Corinthians five seventeen. Second Corinthians five seventeen talks about a new creation. Let go of the fallen nature and within in every worldly lust and embracing our new nature, holy nature. Let go of worldly thoughts and natures. And that can in anything that can lead us to sin, we need to pursue holiness. First Peter one fourteen through sixteen. First Peter one fourteen through sixteen. Learn to discern what is temporary from what is eternal. Revelation twenty one and one. Revelation twenty one and one. And now we need to keep our minds on perfect peace and what really matters and the things that are eternal. And that things are internal impact our lives and not live for the things of the world. And that let a life dedicated to God and pleasing to him. And that see the world from God's perspective, a disconnection from the lives of the world taught through us through our entire lives. Start by observing how Jesus and the apostles live. What were, the, what were their priorities? What matters to them? And how did they relate matters to them? Luke 4, 1 through 13, Luke 4, 1 through 13, mindset of heavenly places, let love be your motive. 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 13, 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 13, our love for him and others must be our driving force for what we do and think, acknowledge the presence of God in your lives, that we cannot do alone and that God is always with us. Isaiah 41 and 10, Isaiah 41 and 10, and that assurance of Assurance of can't okay, handling this for a sec. Sets us focus on what matters on the things of the earth. Don't depend on others' strength. We depend on God. And that when you feel weak or mind slips into negative thoughts, remember God is with us. And that's God is there within us. Seek God's wisdom. And that we need God's wisdom to help us focus on our mind and hearts on the kingdom of God. Be humble and acknowledge that you need it. Proverbs 3 and 7. Proverbs 3 and 7. And in that all wisdom comes from God. Proverbs 2 and 6, Proverbs 2 and 6, Proverbs, I'm almost done. And that pray and ask God to give you wisdom, James 1 and 5, James 1 and 5, and that we, and that we know advice from more experienced believers, from and believers in Christ, learn from those in the body of Christ, Proverbs 19 and 2, Proverbs 19 and 2, make prayer and Bible reading a daily habit. And that you don't go without food and food every day. That prayer is prayer and Bible is your food as well. The scripture teaches everything we need to know about God so we can have a new life. Care, occupy our minds and put the holy and we must live holy. We must have quality from quality time on a daily basis. Asking God to put help put up into practice what we are learning. Memorize Bible verses, committing the word of God to memory is a great way to keep your mind on heavenly things. Psalms 119.11, Psalms 119.11, then ask God to search our hearts, take courage, and do that. Psalms 139.23, Psalms 139.23. Show us what grieves him and the things that we do to grieve him. Sanctify your minds and change your ways. Psalms 51 and 10, Psalms 51 and 10, confess your sins and ask God to forgive you on a daily basis. That is a critical habit. Believe that Jesus paid the price for our sins and at the cross and ask God to help us fight temptation and fight those same sins. Proverbs 28 and 28, 13, Proverbs 28, 13, flee from temptation and that we can never overestimate our strength to resist it. And that Matthew 26, 41, Matthew 26, 41, that we must flee from the situation, get away like Joseph did in Genesis 39, 11 through 12, Genesis 39, 11 through 12, that, that we need to protect our minds and not give an opportunity to the devil to tempt us. Ephesians 4, 26 through 27, Ephesians 4, 26 through 27, create your strategies to bring your mind to God throughout the day. We have to be intentional to bring God's word into your mind. Thank God for everything that good is happening. There's always something to be thankful for. Take time to read a portion of the scriptures, talk to God, avoid indulging in earthly pleasures. Romans 6, 23. Romans 6.23, in that most sins 
Don't happen unexpectedly. Just begin with a little temptation. We give in and think no, think it's no big deal. And that every sin is a huge sin. And it opens the door for demonic trafficking to come in. Enemy doesn't play fair or fight fair. And that we must learn to resist every temptation. We need to pursue the will of God and resist any thing that can lead us into sin. Practice fasting. Let it be on a daily, weekly task. Pray for family, children, challenges, financials, or whatever. We fast and we give up something. We need to fast and we need to take time to energy to exclu- and include the Lord. Matthew 4, Matthew 4, and the disciples learn through fasting. 1 Corinthians 9.37, 1 Corinthians 9.37, yay. And Romans 5 and 8, Romans 5 and 8, that the Lord has done a lot for us. And that shows his great love for us and he, while he Christ died for us. And that he forgives us. John 1 and 12, John 1 and 12. He adopted us for his own children, that God gave us eternal life with him, and thank the Lord for all he has done. Psalms 145 and 9. Psalms 145 and 9. Worship the Lord and God in his kindness. Learn to think in- intentionally, and that thinking on heavenly things is not natural for us. Practice intentionality. Avoid letting your mind be wandered. Feed it with a gut with good things and godly things. Beware of pride. Pride is a threat that lives in each one of us. Remain humble. James 4 and 6. James 4 and 6, and consider others better, better than yourself, Philippians 2 and 3, Philippians 3, 2 and 3. Keep in mind, you don't deserve any favor from the, from the Lord, Ephesians 2, 8 through 9, Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. Remember the good things that, that also come from the Lord, James 1 and 17, James 1 and 17, put your hope in God, and that we all face some sort of resistance, including our own earthly nature. And those are my notes and what I got. Sorry for the length. <laughs> It's all good. You're a mute apostle. I'm sorry. All right. No apology needed. I was saying, I said, you dotted your I's, you cross your T's. You was prepared uh, coming to, uh, to the battlefield, which is a blessing. Amen. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. Training, y'all. We got to be thorough in the training that God has given us to do, uh, to be again, to, uh, eat. I was just saying, we need to start applying what we learning because you're going to get tests in these areas. Trust and believe me. Um, anybody had the video that we watched while uh for homework was talking about let me look and see what the video oh the video was on what is what is a trans and that it, it was pastor no 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 mercy no no mercy was the actual lady that was uh bringing the message on that so have anybody else got a chance to watch the video please um mute and share with what you get out of that video, please. Alicia, Lisa, Corlinda, talk to me. I'm mute. Nobody? I know I know Liz is, so we're giving you guys a chance to come on and let me know what you get. What did you learn from the video? Did anybody else watch it? Lisa? I watched, I watched the Amen. video briefly. I, I watched Amen. it briefly. Um, uh, she, I believe she came from Acts and was talking about, um, didn't get the names right, but um was it Cornelius I'm gonna ask Elizabeth <laughs> it was yeah, Cornelius right. um um about um him going into a trance and with it um I, I'm assuming he was on a rooftop but what, what really kind of caught me about the video and um you know she talked about how how um um people don't believe that you know, uh, there's visions, there's um, 
uh, seeing into the spirit realm and all of that. So she wanted to be a uh, scriptural basis to basically show us where um, a trance um, actually uh, occurred in the, in the Bible itself. So, um, but what I got off on another path when she talked about um, the inner vision, the open vision and the trance. And so I didn't know what the inner vision was or the, or the open vision. So I, I looked at some more of her videos to give me an understanding of basically um, uh, the inner vision, the open vision and the, uh, and the trance. So I could kind of understand, I kind of wanted to see the difference. Um, I kind of didn't see a difference um, between them. Um, but that's kind of basically what I got out. I kind of went on a different road. Okay. All right. Uh, anybody else got a chance to watch the video? Kind of give us an understanding of what you gather from the video. Come on, talk to me. Corlinda, if you got a chance to watch it. I did get a chance to watch the video and like Lisa said, she came from the book, the book of Acts to show where there is actually uh, in the Bible where it talks about trance and uh, she, I got out of it where she made the statement that in spending time with God while praying and fasting, you're likely to receive in a vision or a trance you're like to receive, you're likely to receive from God in that manner. So that's what I got out of the video. Okay, Liz, what did you get? Amen. I was talking to me, sorry, my bad. What is a trance? She came from Acts 10, 10 through 13, and that made, making preparations. And then the Bible says he fell into a trance and the how the sky opened and saw something in front of him and saw the sky opening up. Same as Ezekiel, ob object like a sheath, sheath came down with four corners and were all kinds of four, four animals like crawling and creatures of the earth, birds of the air, Acts 11 and 5, LX 11 and 5, city of Joppa, praying while you were fast, while you spend time with God and worship. These are the times when you are likely to receive an inner vision and, or an open vision or a trance. He was praying in a trance, came to him specifically in, in chapter 11, came to Peter and asked him what had happened. Peter explained in the whole story. People in those days accepted that falling into a trance is from God because they he saw something coming down from heaven. Peter, while in this trance, the voice of the God saying, get up and kill Peter, kill and eat. So Peter also was a man of God who preached a lot around and that he was a great preacher and things like that. And that Paul with an Ananias in Acts 22 and 7, Acts 22 and 7, and that instantly Paul received sight when Ananias laid hands on him. And that that God of our fathers is uh, destined and appointing you to be progressively known, recognized and perceived more, be more intimate, acquainted with the realm, with the will of God, being a witness unto all men, being baptized, and that when back at Jerusalem I was praying, they fell into a trance. And that when you are busy with God, things happen, that go things going forth. And that Jesus told Paul to go forth, and that being sent to a Gentile nation, and the, how God sent Paul into the Gentile nation. Trances happened while he was standing praying. See Acts 22 and 17. Acts 22 and 17. And how praying in the temple, standing on the earth, and that he was enlightened to God. And that he saw Jesus standing there. Then that, excuse me, she made mention of Maria Wordsworth, Etta, praying for people to get healed. And that praying for the people in the churches, radical faith. And that, and okay, people falling in the anointing of God around her, and when she wasn't there, and how how strong she was in the spirit and the place she was preaching the gospel and stop, and with gone flesh. I got to be better writing, and that busy, busy, continue to be busy for God, and how 
She was busy for God himself in the kingdom. Amazing to be able to experience that for ourselves. Get into the spirit. Talk with God. We have to pray. Use our gifts. And that God has given us, given you things to do. Use the time with God. Worship in the holy place. And that when you do these things, you might be raptured into the into a trance. And that receive something from God that could change your life. And that you could do great things and live like Paul and other disciples and other prophets of the Old Testament. Trances happen to the children of God. And that astral projection, astral projection is witchcraft. Stay clear of those things. And that that is not falling into a trance from God. Two different things. Acts 22, Acts 22, that shows people, shows people like when they say trances are not in the Bible, it's clearly there. And that trances are from God. It is a kingdom and it can happen. And that Jesus and God and Holy Spirit, you have to have a relationship with them and that you will receive something from God. And that there were people in the Bible that went into trances and Jesus ministered to them. And those are what I got. Amen. Amen. That was good. Okay. Well, 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 we know it's now it's time. We want you guys to go ahead and get your pen and papers uh, prepared. Let's start taking notes uh, for what I'm about to give you some more golden nuggets. Amen. Um, so uh, question. Sure, fresh. Uh, it's going to be in my lesson. Who is this, Lisa? Yeah, I should have known. Come on, Lisa. Talk to me. It's, no, it's going to be. No, it's, it's gonna, go ahead. No, as, as, um, as Elizabeth was talking, something else came to my mind. And I was wondering if anybody else had called it in the video. Uh, she made a statement that said, um, um, uh, she said, well, reminder that the uh, Peter saw four-footed beasts. I mean, four-footed animals, not not six or eight feet. Anybody catch that in her video and I possibly that. what she yeah. what she meant? Go to the. Let's go to the word. Let's take it to the word. Acts ten, verse uh -huh. ten through seventeen. Acts ten, verse ten through seventeen. It's already in my notes. So that's why I said, uh, so that's why you have to be able to discern, eat the meat, spit out the bones. But sometimes, you know, we can get in error just as well when we bring in the word. So uh, we just have to make sure that it's backing up with the scripture. And that's why we have to study uh, as well. Okay. So um, okay. Acts 10, 10 and oh, thank you. Liz wrote it down for me. So to answer your question, you can go ahead and look at that scripture uh, talked about Peter. She was saying, uh, and this is the correct, uh, okay, the correct way of explaining. But I'm going to get into the notes of that. Amen. That's good that you brought that out. Good catch, guys. Amen. Amen. Welcome, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Amen. God bless. All right. Get those pens and paper ready, guys. We're going to do this. And we're gonna. the title of this is, is called, got caught up got caught up in a heavenly trance i got caught up in a heavenly trance amen somebody said something wait a minute y'all i gotta go back it said y'all you know when it it be moving so fast so i'm sorry i'm talking about zoom not on Can you read what uh, Alicia has said? Because I, when I clicked on it, it kicked me out. She said I got caught up. Oh, 
What, yeah, what, can... what? Go ahead, babe. Alicia wrote, inside vision is when you see a vision in your mind, and outside vision when you see it before you see it before you like a television. Okay. 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 All right. Amen. Okay. I apologize when I clicked on it down there. It took it kicked me out. So that's why I said I need somebody to interpretate that for me because I don't my computer so sensitive. It's touch screen. All right. So let's go ahead and go into this. And so we're going to talk about um, got caught up in the heavenly trance and, and, you know, trance is uh vision and, and seeing and, and, and the unseen. Okay. Seeing the unseen. Okay. So I'm coming out of revelations uh, four verse two revelations four verse two. Um, amen. And it talks about immediately I was in the spirit. And behold, a throne was standing in heaven and one sitting on the throne. Who are we talking about? John. That's right. John got caught up. Amen. In the heavenly trance. See, it was related that he was in the spirit. And when he beheld a throne that stood in heaven, is it perhaps that the uh, Holy Spirit transported John and or his spirit to heaven or John was seeing a clear vision of what was happening there. See, his first glaze uh, uh, fell on a, a firmly established throne on which sat God. And Isaiah had a similar vision of the Lord sitting upon the throne high and lifted up. Isaiah 6, verse 1. Isaiah 6, verse 1. If you turn to that as well, Isaiah 6, verse 1 says, In the year of the king U Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. See, the imagine of God on a fixed throne indicates that he is sovereign, a king over all creations. Hallelujah. It's also indicate that nothing can shake his throne, praise God, nor can anyone, whether the devil or earthly rulers, uh, 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 touch God from his heaven throne, from his throne. Amen. See, John is about to see a future event that comes uh, that caused unbelievers on earth to panic. But God originate this this uh, those uh, tragic uh, events as judgments. See, which these events may expire sadness as they occur to non-believers. As we turn to Second Peter three and nine, Second Peter chapter three verse nine. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness instead. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Praise God. See, we're going to turn also to Ezekiel 18, verse 23. Ezekiel 18, verse 23. Amen. Do I take any pleasure in the death of the wicked, declares the sovereign Lord, whether I am not pleased when they turn from their ways and life and, and, and life. See, they did not uh, they do not tr trouble God, nor do they change the destiny of those who are Christians before the rapture, who will be in heaven when the judgment falls on the earth. If you turn to Revelations 3 and 10 talks about that in Revelations 3 verse 10. It says, since you have kept my commandment to endure patiently, I will keep you from the hour of trials that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. See, the fact that God is seated on the throne should, cl should cl claim whatever fears comes, whatever fear attacks believers. So he is in control, praise God. He, God who's in control? God, not Satan, God is in control. Let's, def let's get a definition of trans so we can understand that a little bit more as well. It's the state which a man has passed out of the un unusual order of his life 
beyond the unusual limits of cons consciousness and undeterminable being captive and cause of this state to be uh, trans commonly to a strong religious impression, whatever explanation may be given of it. It is true of many and not most of those who have left the stamp of their own character on the religious history of mankind, that they have been liable to pass at times into an abnormal stage. I got that out of the uh, dictionary of the State Bibles Dictionary. That uh, Smith, I'm sorry, I said State Smith <laughs> Bibles Dictionary. Okay, so we only see that the transit is mentioned five times in the Bible, but there is more than enough to, to set a principle of, of a way God moves in us and speaks to us. Well, if you turn to Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 15, Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 15, it reads, one witness is not enough to convict anyone accused of any crime or offense that may have committed. A matter must be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. Okay, so the trances are not merely the dominate of, of and this is what this, that's why I said you got to know that the enemy always try to duplicate what God does. And when he does it, uh, the enemy duplicated is demonic, bottom line. So he's always tried to corporate copy what God does. And this is why when she was talking about the astral projection, don't get, you know, this twisted up with this trans being uh, twisted with uh, uh, witchcraft, new age practice. So this is what I'm, we're going to talk about. And, and forgive me if I butcher this name, but I'm going to try to say it. Sham Mans, that's S-H-A-M-A-N-S. See, that's that new age stuff. So some of these stuff, I, yeah, thank you. She wrote it down. So these are, are is this, what that means, a, a shaman means a person that regards as having access to and influence in the world of good and evil spirits, especially among some people of the Northern Asian and North American. See, typically such people enter into transit uh, state, states doing a ritual, a practice divin div divination, and healing. And we already know that that falls under the category of medicine doctors, witch doctors, and healers. Okay. That's new age, guys. That's new agers. Okay. And also, you in music, like when you hear DJs, uh, they, they began to pump up those beats, you know, those demonic beats, you know, to get people in trances. What, what was that? Um, help me, Holy Spirit. That was a concert, prime example. That's good, Alicia. She said her herbalist, vice versa. That's another thing that we have to be very, very cautious of, too, because they practicing that that's when they you know, trying to do the heal on the natural aspect of it, but then they put in different type of what it is, what's that word? Concordance, the this the, the that stuff in it that, that can be demonic. I it started to see now. Why I'm just Holy Spirit help me. Yes, thank you. Uh Carl Linda got it. So Travis Scott, prime example, that concert. We already know that, that was an altar, that was an evil altar, that was, you know. Uh, astral projection that was uh, uh, e uh, evil altar that was uh, sacrifice uh, uh, blood sacrifice of, of human sacrifice I think eight people had died uh, in throwing that so that's a prime example what type of um, time we living in you know that they're they're promoting things of evil as if it's good as is is it is you know a right thing to do you know and so so this is why we as intercessors got to continue to be praying and uh on the behalf of god's people that they don't get you know 
caught up in these type of things, uh, rituals, you know. So thank you for sharing that, uh, Carlinda. Um, so uh, where was I at? So, oh, so a transit is n not hypnosis, but through hypnotics, people that do experience a transit-like state. So transits are not lower, lower to the realm of witches and warlocks. So through these dark ages, do use trances to enter into the astral projection that we were talking about early. And also it, it counterfeits on the biblical concepts of being transported in the spirit. Y'all have questions? Write it in the comment or write it down and we're going to try to cover it at the end if I could. Okay. So the enemy always, remember this, he works to what counterfeit what God is doing. And because of this, many have fear to even learn of the trans realm, transit realm, realm. See, the, the reality is that the transits of, of a biblical, we need to understand what the Bible say about them. And that's why we're going to talk about that tonight. And the uh, first one we're going to talk about is the Bab, Bab um, is it, it is a prophet. His name is Bab, Bablam, B-A-L-A-A-M. Bab, yes, it's two uh, A. So it's B-A-L-A-A-M. I want to make sure I spell it right so y'all yeah, know what I'm talking about. There we go. Thank you. So this false prophet who is a king that tried to hire to, to curse Israel and went into a trance. And let's go ahead and turn to number, Numbers 24, 1 through 4. 20, numbers 24, verse 1 through 4. Amen. Okay, thank you. Uh, so when ba Bab Babylon saw that it, it pleased the Lord to bless Israel. He went not at, as, as others, I'm sorry, as at other times to seek for enchantments, but he set his face towards the wilderness and Babylon lift up his eyes and saw Israel abiding in his tent according to the trials and the spirit of God came upon him okay and took up his parable and said Balan, ba the son of beor beor b-e-o-r b-e-o-r had said and then the man whose eyes are open has said he has said which heard the words of god which saw the vision of the almighty Falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. See, notice when he fell into this trance, his eyes were open. He was not asleep, but it seemed that he was like a uh, sleep like uh, stage, not moving. Okay. All right. And the next one we're going to talk about is Peter, what Lisa was asking early. Peter's. Uh, had a trance, you know. So Peter trance and uh, fell into a trance that opened his eyes to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. Amen. So let's look at the uh, scripture that I uh, gave you early. Acts 10, verse 10 through 17. Acts 10, verse 10 through 17. And I'm going to give you guys a little time to, you know, to go ahead and turn to that because Lisa brought that out in the video and I'm glad you guys catched you know those type of things and i like lisa because lisa gonna challenge things she's gonna be like first of all is that what the word said because i need i need you to back it up with the word because we can't add to it we can't take away from the word of god because then that becomes false teaching that come that that, that are fall into the category of uh demonic you know documents you know what i'm saying that we're allowing to uh you know try to you know try to uh put that in you know taken away from the true word of god so we have to be careful with that amen 
and I know we're human. I, I made mistakes too, may say something, but I try, I try to apologize as the Holy Spirit showed me. Now you need to correct that, you know, and because we cannot, you know, lead the sheep in error. Amen. So then it, it says, then he became very hungry and wanted to eat. But while they was made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven open and an object like a great sheet bound at the four corners descended to him and let down to the earth. It, in it were all kinds of four-footed animals on the earth that you catch that. It was what? All kinds of four-footed animals on the earth wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. See, and a voice came to him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or unclean. And a voice spoke to him again the second time. What God has cleansed, you must not call common. So this was done, what, three times? And the object of uh, was taken up into the heaven again. Now, while Peter wondered within himself, was this vision which he had seen meant? Behold, the men who had been sent from Cornelius and had made inquiry for Samson's house. And some, and I mean, stood before the gate. See, notice that Peter uh, saw a vision in the trance. But many people who falls into trance report that they haven't seen visions. Some others can even describe what they have seen or didn't see anything. Okay. Now we're going to talk about Paul. There's another person that experienced a trance. So Paul fell into a trance and turned to Acts 22, verse 17 through 21. Acts 17, uh, 22, I'm sorry, verse 17 through 21. And as I give you time to turn to that as well, because we want to, um, what I'm trying to show you uh, to be, begin to discern evil versus good. So we we talked about the first uh Thing, what was the false prophet was Bab Bab Babylon, Babylon, B-A-L-A-A-M. I may be butchering his name, but I apologize. So now we're going to talk about his disciples, the apostles, uh, um, Peter and Paul experience it. Okay. So Paul's transit fell into, um, in, into one in, in which the Lord had gave him a warning and a commission to preach the, the gospel to the Gentiles, okay? So Acts 22, 17, verse 21, it reads, when I returned to Jerusalem and was praying at the temple, I fell into a trance and I saw the Lord speaking to me. Quick, he said, leave Jerusalem immediately because the people here will not accept your testimony about me. Lord, I replied, these people know that I went from one synagogue to another in prison and beat those and, and beat those who believed in you. And when the blood of your mortal Stephan was shed, I stood there giving my approval and guarding the clothes of those who were killed, uh, that killed him. And then the Lord said to me, go. I will send you far away to the, to the Gentiles. See, notice that Paul got instructions in the trance that just as Peter did. See, the trance, like any other supernatural encounter or purposeful, 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 okay? All right, amen. So living in the spirit, and Galatians 5 and verse 25, Galatians 5 and 25, uh, verse 25 says, and Galatians chapter 5, verse 25 says, if we what? Live in the spirit, let us also 
walk in the spirit. Amen. So as believers, because I almost said Christians, because right now everybody proclaiming Christians. You got Christian witches. You got Christian yogas. You got Christian. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Everybody proclaiming to be Christians, which is very, very, yeah, again, how the enemy duplicate things, you know, he'll try to do. But we're talking about the believers and you are a believer. Amen. So we don't go in and out of the spirit, but we live in the spirit. See, there are two expressions for being in the spirit. And one is to be in a trance or in a vision. To end that sense, your physical uh, sense are more or less suspended and that the temporary experience. See, the other and more important expressions of being in the spirit is being born into the spirit. Amen. So then when you become aware and alive to the spirit realm through the word, and the Holy Ghost and live in that consciousness, even though you're in this world and your physical sense are conscious of your natural environment, how be it, you live with the mindset of a and consciousness of the heavenly being that you are. So you see the same things with other people, but you have a different interpretation and a different understanding see if we live in the spirit we should also walk in the spirit in other words since you're born into the realm of the spirit since you live in the spirit act accordingly amen act with the consciousness that you're in the spirit and let that consciousness detect your physical condition see for example when the children of israel left um Egypt. The Bible tells us that they was they was care they 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 carried their own atmosphere with them, and the Lord went before them by day in the pillar of a cloud to lead them the way, and and by the night of the in the pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night, and that was in uh, Exodus thirteen verse twenty one. Exodus thirteen verse twenty one, and I'll go ahead and read that because. Exodus 13 and 21, just what we mentioned, that they what they had a pillar of uh, cloud by day and they had a pillar of fire by night. And you can imagine being in a in a wilderness, pitch dark. You couldn't see nothing ahead of you. You know, you couldn't see your hand if you put your hand in front of you. That's how dark it was. But to God be the glory, he provide light. He does. He provide direction in order for to lead them. Amen. See, the bitter cold at night and the scoring heat by day didn't affect them because they were what? They were in the Holy Ghost atmosphere. Amen. Amen. So today we, we live in that same Holy Ghost atmosphere in Christ. Amen. So the Holy Ghost lives in you and you carry him everywhere. He's praise God. So therefore you have his atmosphere with you, which make you different. So that's why you can't, you can come into a place where everybody is sad and depressed. And we got a lot of them intercessors that's real sensitive like that. They can pick up really quick when they can feel that the atmosphere is intense or heaviness there, they, they can immediately pick it up because they, they'll begin to bind it up. They begin to pray that thing, you know, off because we gotta, we, what I'm trying to say, we're, we're, we've got to know what we carry. My God, oh my God, hey, that's, that's profound right there. We got to know what we carry within the, within us. Amen. So, and these things has to change in Jesus name. OK, so because you came in with the you because you 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 are you are, are a you are a shift changer. I'm talking about shift the atmosphere in a good way. You bring that joy. You bring that peace. You bring that love. You follow me? Amen. Amen. So people that's under the spell of darkness and failure. 
and you come in there with that brightness uh, and victory, victor victory that because of your the light of the world. Hey, Amen. Amen. So dominate your environment with the atmosphere of the spirit. Walk in the spirit, ladies and gentlemen, for that's the realm for which and into which you're born of God. So for our lights and the monetary troubles Lord, that, that is achieving for us and in, in, uh, achieve for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all, outweighed them all, okay? So we, we fix our eyes not on what is seen, come on, y'all, but on what is unseen. But what is seen is temporarily. Did you catch that? What is seen is temporarily. But what is unseen, praise God, is what? Eternal. Amen. So the verse above shows us that the a verd, a verd, uh, um, a, a principle of, of faith, I'm sorry, a principle of faith. You got to see the unseen. Come on. But you should be able to visualize what you desire. Come on. Do you see your marriage being restored? Do you see your children coming off a of drug? Do you see your daughter, your son coming out of that homosexual lifestyle? you catch me. Come on, y'all. You got to see it and began to proclaim it. You got to begin to speak it. You got to begin to, hallelujah, rejoice. Praise God. Praise God. And see it. See it, ladies, inside first. See, this is important because you can't possess what you can't see. Oh, catch that. Catch that. What did I just say? What did I? So negativity. Come on. Carnality minds. What, 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 what? See. You got to change that. You got to change that mindset. So again, this is important because you can't possess what you can't see. Any change you desire that has first, because let me just, let me say this. When you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, you couldn't see him. He didn't just come down and, and sit right there and say, hey, hey, this is me. Come on, daughter. Come on in. Come in. The door is open. No. You had to believe that he does exist. You had to believe that he created you in the image of him. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So any changes that you desire that hasn't first taken place in your spirit or which you haven't yet seen on the inside will not manifest outwardly amen okay so abraham he was a great leader of faith he had to first see the vision of god's promise to him of becoming a father of many many nations and then genesis 5 uh, 15 i'm sorry verse 5 through 16 let's turn to that genesis chapter 15 5 uh, through 6 so Genesis 15, verse 5 and 6 says, he took him outside, come on, and said, look up at the sky and count the stars. Ain't no way you can count all them stars. Come on. It's zillions of stars. Come on. So if, if indeed you can't count them, then he said to him, so shall your offsprings be Abe believing that the Lord and he credited it to him as righteousness also we're going to talk about Joshua Joshua was planning to attack Jericho and the Lord said to him see I have given Jericho into your hand it's king and the mighty man of violence So Joshua in 6 verse 2 talked about that. Joshua 6 verse 2. Okay. We're going to not turn to it, but we're going to, that's what, what I just talked about. That was the scripture that, uh, that I just talked about that Jacob 
uh, Jericho was given to Joshua was put in his hand and God let him know, Joshua, you a great man. You're a mighty man of God. Amen. Valid, valid, valid. So Jacob also, when he was being uh, cheated by his uncle, was 11, 11, 11, 11, 11. He, he used his imaginary, uh, pow imaginative power to get plain color lambs to reduce, reproduce uh, streaks and specks and gray spots. Okay, so that's in Genesis 30, uh, verse 25 through 43. Genesis 30, verse 25 through 43. And then Genesis also, it shows in Genesis 31, verse 1 through 13, Genesis 31, verse 1 through 13. So he tells that the spirit side uh, uh, of what happened, even in Genesis 31 and 10, Genesis 31 and 10, it happens at the time when the flocks concede, concede that, they, that I have lifted my eyes and saw in a dream. And behold, the rams were leaping upon the flocks were streaks and specks and great fire. okay so these are the examples that have shown how important that it is for you to have the vision of your desire with a positive attitude and for the extent of your vision is the boundary of the blessings see your imaginative imaginative power is your creative ability and you got to see the unseen. See, you got to see the way God see it. Amen. So picture yourself living in the reality of what the word says about you. Com com contempl con contemplating that the level of success and the victory that you want to attain to see yourself function at that level. Amen. Amen. As I pray this prayer over you, Father, I thank you right now for enlightening the eyes of, our, of your people's minds and their spirit to see, understand, and apprehend the spiritual abilities. And the eyes of our understanding have been enlightened to know the, the, the hope of your calling and the riches of God, the glory of your inheritance in the saints, even as your word finds a vent through, through us. The Holy Spirit is our pe peculiar atmosphere and the advantage, advantage uh, uh, in our lives. And you made our lives very different and beautiful. We rule, we dominate the world with the atmosphere of joy, peace, success, and victory in Jesus name. Let our spirit respond to the word and our faith produce that desire results that we walk in divine health, victory, dominion, and the and in the power of the spirit tonight. Hallelujah. I ask you God allow us to walk in the light of divine enlightenment and that we have received from studying the scripture and through consistent studying and meditating on your word. Lord, increase our knowledge, grace, and peace, and multiply in our lives, that we have the dominion over every situation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless. And that ends our lesson for tonight. All right, we're going to go ahead. Any questions from our viewers or from our class? Any questions on mute, ladies? Put it in uh, the chat if you have any questions pertaining to the lesson. Amen. 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 Praise God. Well, to God be the glory. I thank God he, he painted a, a very uh, good picture so you can understand um, that even more. I'm going to just tell y'all, this is something new for me as well. But I, I'm, I love challenges. I love diving in things and studying uh, as well. Amen. To get more understanding when it comes to the word of God. Amen. Especially when you, when, you know, God is 
uh, giving you the gift as uh, as a seer, you know, and and you walk in that office as as a prophet. Amen. Praise God. All right. So real quick before I start, I I want to ask you guys. It was three books that I mentioned at the beginning of the class, and if you guys I know uh, didn't hear the three books for the next class that we're going to have, because we're going to take a break. I usually take a week or two off so you guys can begin to go back over your notes, digest it, chew on it first and begin to digest the word so you can get it, you know, uh, more of it, understanding of it. Amen. Um, so the first book, if we're going to take a vote of the, I just need your hand up to let me know, yay or nay hands up hands down if you in agreement to this particular book so this book that we got for the next class the authority the authority of the believer the authority of the believer by john macmillan okay all right and then the second book is the open heavens and it's a guide to close uh to 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 a close fellowship with God, and that's value 19 with Pastor E. A. L. Aiden Boy. I messed up, I may butcher his name, but he's African. I apologize. Next one is The War on the Saints, Jesse's Pen Lewis. Okay, so all right. For the hands count, yay, yes thumbs up or hands up for the authority of the believers authorities of the believers let me see the hands let me see oh thumbs up that's good that's good hands up thumbs up okay all right keep them up keep them up because i'm getting the count keep them up i see you alicia i got you was down that's one all right corlinda amen Okay. Even my viewers, you're more than welcome to participate. Fran, that's three. Okay. All right. So the next book is Open Heavens. Open Heavens. Let me get thumbs up more. If you guys think that will be a good book to read. All right. All right. Let's go to the next one. War on the Saints. War on the Saints. Ladies, okay, I got you. Wars on War on the Saints. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Come on, viewers. Y'all can help vote. What book you like for us to read for our, ne our, our next class? All right, so the book that we're going to come out of is The Authority of the Believers. The Authority of Believers. Okay. All right, amen. All right, I'm going to order the book, and then it's official. Once I get the book, it, I'll post it on social media. And uh, let you guys know we're going to go ahead and because I, I like to look at the book first and kind of, you know, just just have to look at it, guys, first. Can't be just, you know, God has trust me with his sheep, guys. I, I take it very seriously. I don't, we got to don't know anything out there at you. All right. Let me go ahead. Chapter nine. Let me go ahead, guys. We get this this party rolling. So chapter nine, verse, I'm mean, I'm first, Lord, uh, page 95. And if you got the Kindle, it, of course, it's not going to be on chat, uh, page 95. Um, if you could be so kind, Miss Carlinda, to start us off. Man, I keep dropping. You must be trapped. Oh, okay, go ahead. I keep, keep, keep kicking me out. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry, Carlinda. Yes, Apostle. Chapter nine, the ecstatic dimension. Trances are mysterious. We don't read much about them in the Bible. And unlike prophecy, we don't have much to look toward in the modern church. You can't be trained to go into a trance. 
You can't choose to go into a God-ordained trance. You can't choose to come out of a trance. Transes are somewhat of an enigma, and they are also part of the seer realm. Most specifically, trances are part of the ecstatic realm of the spirit. The ecstatic realm is a realm marked by ecstasy. We have relegated that word to a feeling of the flesh. There's even a hallucinogenic drug by this name. But ecstasy is actually a biblical concept, is one of many mystical aspects of the prophetic. To understand the ecstatic realm, you have to understand mystics, which is just another word for mysteries. Merriam-Webster's dictionary defines mystical as having a spiritual meaning or reality that is neither apparent to the senses nor obvious to the intelligence. Although some high profile Christians have given a bad name to mystics, Christian mystics of over 100 years ago were men and women of great revelation who left behind understandings into the mysteries of God and his word like this. Truly it is a trustworthy word and deserving of every welcome, your almighty word, Lord, which in such deep silence made its way down from the Father's royal throne and speak to us better by its silence. Hear what this loving and mysterious silence of the eternal word speaks to us. He speaks peace for the holy people upon whom reverence for him and his example impose a religious silence. Guric of Igni, an 11th century Cisterian abbot. Mysteries tied to the seer realm. Paul, who wrote two thirds of the New Testament by direct revelation, spoke of mystic concepts again and again in the Bible. If we are rooted and grounded in the Bible, in the mystic realm, including transits, being caught up in the spirit and transported in the spirit, we can engage with the whole counsel of God and understand better the mysteries of the kingdom. Mysteries are tied to the seer realm and the Bible speaks of them over and over again. Although this short chapter is not intended to give a deep explanation of the mystic realm, it's important that you understand some fundamentals as they relate to the seer realm. God makes mysteries known to us by revelation. Paul explains it this way. If indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which was given to me for you, how that by revelation, he made known to me the mystery, as I have briefly written already, by which when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it has now been revealed by the spirit to his holy apostles and prophets, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel, Ephesians 3, 2 through 6. Mystery in that, in that verse comes from the Greek word mysterion. According to the King James Version, New Testament Greek lexicon, it means hidden thing, secret, mystery, generally mysteries, religious secrets confided only to the initiated and not to ordinary mortals, a hidden or secret thing, not obvious to the understanding, a hidden purpose or counsel, the secret counsels which govern God in dealing with the the, the righteous, which are hidden from ungodly and wicked men, but plain to the, to the godly in rab, rabbinic writings. It denotes the mystic or hidden sense of an Old Testament saying, of an image or form seen in a vision of a dream. Vine's expository dictionary says, mysterion denotes not the mysterious as with the English, English word, but that which being outside the range of unassisted natural apprehension can be made known only by divine revelation and is made known in a manner and at a time appointed by God and 
and to those only who are illuminated by his spirit. You can see how mysteries are tied to the prophetic realm because Amos 3, 7 tells us, surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. And you can see a clear tie in to the seer realm through images, visions, and dreams. Treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden in the mystic realm. Consider Paul's words in Colossians 2, 1 and 3. For I want you to know what a great conflict I have for you and those in Laodicea. And for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love and attaining to all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. The Holy Spirit reveals. The Holy Spirit is the revealer. He is the one who revealed Christ to our heart and convicted us, drawing us to our Savior. That was just the beginning. The Holy Spirit wants us to come to the knowledge of the mystery of God, which unlocks treasures, wisdom, and knowledge. Sometimes he reveals mysteries through his word, sometimes through a still small voice, and sometimes through the seer realm. After speaking in parables, Jesus said to his disciples, because it, because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given, Matthew 13 and 11. This word mystery appears in the New Testament 26 times and speaks of the mystery of Gentiles being grafted into the vine, see Romans 11, 24 and 25, the wisdom of God in a mystery, see 1 Corinthians 2 and 7. The resurrection of believers is a mystery, see 1 Corinthians 15 and 51. His being made known to us the mystery of his will, see Ephesians 1 and 9. There is the mystery of the gospel, see Ephesians 6 and 19. There is the mystery of Christ, see Colossians 4 and 3. There's the mystery of iniquity, see 2 Thessalonians 2 and 7. There's the mystery of faith, see 1 Timothy 3 and 9. There's the mystery of godliness, see 1 Timothy 3 and 16. There's the mystery of the seven stars, see Revelations 1 and 20. Unlocking Paul, Paul says, I'm sorry, Paul. All right. Fran, y'all pray. I need y'all intercessors to be praying for Fran because she's keep getting kicked out and this is unusual. Um, so um, if you can pick up Lisa, she's on page 98, Unlocking the Mysteries of God's uh, God by Faith. Unlocking Mysteries of God by Faith. Jesus wants his disciples to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. We have to press into the mystical and ecstatic realms. These realms are largely misunderstood and error can creep in if we are not rooted in the word. But the reality is the word has plenty to say about this dimension. The Bible calls us stewards of the mysteries of God. See 1 Corinthians 4, 1. We can't steward something we haven't unlocked. Mysteries become revelation as God opens the eyes of our heart so we can see what we could not see before. Proverbs 25, 2 reveals, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings is to search out a matter. And Deuteronomy 29, 29 says, the secret things belong to the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. Jeremiah 33, 3 instructs us, call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. 
there are mysteries like salvation into which the angels long to look. See 1 Peter 1.12. The purpose of mysteries revealed is to release faith to obey what the Lord is calling us to do. This is not for knowledge's sake alone. Knowledge puffs up. 1 Corinthians 8.1. Consider this quote. I pray you seek more to embody God than to merely have knowledge of God. For knowledge can deceive us with pride, but a meek, loving awareness will not deceive. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. 1 Corinthians 8, 1. Knowledge leads to travail, whereas awareness leads to, to rest. In closing, we will take you into some of the more mystery, uh, mysterious aspects of the seer realm so that you have a foundation to keep you securely tied to the word of God in an age where deception is running rampant. Okay, oh, Paul, please, I'm sorry. I'm, I apologize, y'all. I'm multitasking. Uh, um, so that's good. Any questions pertaining to that chapter before Lisa goes on to the next one, chapter 10? Any questions? Facebook. Okay. Amen, amen, amen. All right. All right, Lisa, if you don't mind picking up uh, pe uh, chapter 10, if you will be so kind, sweetie. Thank you. Okay. Oh, Lord, what did I do? Chapter 10, the trance dimension. Trances are merely the domain of shamas, new agers, and DJs with pumping beats. A trance is not hypnosis, although hypnotized people do experience a trance-like state. Trances are not relegated to the realm of witches and warlocks. Though these dark agents do use trances to enter into astral pro projection and counterfeit of the biblical concept of being transported in the spirit. The enemy always works to counterfeit what God is doing. And because of this, many have feared to even learn of the trans realm. The reality is trances are biblical and we need to understand what the Bible says about them. What is a trance? Before we go any further, it's helpful to see various definitions that will lay a foundation for your faith. Noah Webster 1828 dictionary defines trance this way. In an ecstasy, a state in which the soul seems to have passed out of the body into celestial regions or to be wrapped into visions. A trance is a state of one who is out of himself. According to Easton's Bible Dictionary, the word trance comes from the Greek word um, is stasis form which the word ecstasy is derived. According to the King James New Testament Greek lexion, eschastasis means a throwing of the mind out of its normal state, alienation of mind, whether such as makes a lunatic or that of a man who by some sudden emotion is transported as it were out of himself. So that in this rap condition, although he is awake, his mind is drawn off from all surrounding objects and wholly fixed on things divine that he sees nothing but the forms and images lying within and thinks that he perceives with his bodily eyes and ears reality, reality shown him by God. I suppose it's hard to describe it if you've not experienced it, but Smith's Bible Dictionary goes a little deeper, saying a trance is 
the state in which a man has passed out of the usual order of his life, beyond the usual limits of consciousness and volition, being wrath if in cause of this state are to be traced commonly to strong religious impressions. Whatever explanation may be given of it, it is true of many, if not of most, of those who have left the stamp of their own character on the religious history of mankind, that they have been liable to pass at times into this abnormal state. The International Bible Encyclopedia defines trans this way. The condition expressed by this word is a mental state in which the person affected is partially or wholly unconscious of objective sensations, but intensely alive to subjective impressions, which however they may be originated or felt as if they were revelations from without. They may take the form of visual or, or auditory sensations or else of impressions of taste, smell, heat, or cold. And sometimes these conditions precede epi epileptic seizures constituting what is named the aura elepticus. Okay. All right, pause. Any questions? I'm about to look that up. Can I make a comment? All right. Yeah, baby. Because this has been my um, experience. That's right. She sure did. I forgot about that. Come on, talk um, to me. Because this has been my experience. Uh, it has happened. And I often wonder, <laughs> was this... Uh, uh anything spiritual about it <laughs> because i would go into a trance and uh sometimes people you know if i would go into a trance it's possible that they would say are you okay or uh before i would actually have a, a seizure or sometime i would not even have a seizure i would just go into a a trance or or if it happened and when I go to the doctor, they would say, did you have an aura? And um, and sometimes when I reflect back on those times, I, I would wonder, you know, God, were you dealing with me in a spiritual manner at that time? Were, were you dealing with me? Were, was I developing into a seer, you know, at that time? And so... Sometimes I, you know, because I would have an aura or I would have a trance right before I would go into something. And so, and, and they would just teach me from a medical standpoint, know your triggers, like what did you eat? What did this happen? Or what caused you to go into this and things like that. And so things like that, I start learning. And sometimes I do still have, uh, a trans and I will, you know, and I will see things and I will see things even, um, I could be in a wide open space. I can, I can be at home. I can be in a crowd of people and I will sit and be in a trance and just go, you know, in a sense, be to myself, but yet be with a crowd of people. So, and people will wonder because I have had this, sickness or ish issue am i okay but sometimes i'm seeing things so amen okay amen i'm gonna let liz pick up reading any other questions i see alicia wrote in i have Thanks, a go ahead lisa baby i'm sorry how um in reference to what Carlinda said, um, if um, if if her trances um, um, are are spiritual trances, how how could she develop that? 
how, you know what I'm saying? How could she, you know, develop that to know whether or not it's, you know, spiritual or, you know, just something that is occurring is, is, that's my question if that's I, I would say I'm gonna let her I'm gonna let her answer it but anytime you when you, when you go to the doctor and they can't find any medical uh issue you know like what's causing it and can't you know put you on any type of medication prescribe any type of medication for it then she already explained it was spiritual uh so go ahead i'm sorry go ahead lacy you got something else to add to that oh carlinda so go ahead and answer that question you know because this is how god developed our gifts i'm just gonna say this is how he developed it you know and then you have to be able to discern what is god is showing you in this different uh episode or this different event you know what i'm saying like i i used to have people that were young come to me because they will see things like somebody this a grandmother died or or it's an accident car accident and it was you know like teenagers so that mm -hmm. gift was early developed being developed so it would cause the enemy was, was actually trying to cause fear uh in them but after they you know after they get groomed after god began to cultivate it and then it it, it it starts smoothing out a little bit more that you get more understanding that this is a gift that god is giving you hopefully that answers some of your question lisa if not carlinda can explain it a little bit more go ahead because basically when i would have the the trans or as they called it an aura then i would it would be over and I guess you would call it, I would snap out of it and nothing, nothing would happen. Like I said, I could be in a crowded room and I would go into a trance and I would see something and basically be away from the crowd within my own self and see something and then come back. I mean, it could be where loud, loud music is playing and I would come out, you know, come within myself and not even be bothered by this loud music and even not even somebody could start having a conversation with me and I would not even hear them because I'm in a trance so right. for that moment so but uh if I if I did have an episode or something like that someone around me they would notice because other things would start happening Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Any other questions pertaining to? Okay. Pastor McCoy, I just have a comment. Okay. Uh, I, I've also been in intrinsic state, and the one time, the first time I can remember the Holy Spirit taking me into a intrinsic state because I grew up in the church and I was backslidden and I was in a club and in this club, like Kalinda said, there was loud music, there was people partying, there was people drinking. And I don't know if anybody's ever seen the movie Rosemary's Baby, where they have a part in that movie where the people are up on the counters dancing and it's demonic and it looks cloudy and it's dark. Well, as I was sitting there um, at the table with some of my friends, all of a sudden I noticed the room started getting cloudy. And at first, and I hadn't smoked anything and I had just ordered a fruity drink cause I've never really been a drinker. And all of a sudden I'm like, what is that? And so I was asking a friend of mine, do you see any smoke in here? And she was saying, no. So all of a sudden, as I'm sitting there, the music starts slowing down, like what they call now, talking about the music is called screw. They came out with music called screw, where the music is actually dragged slowly. So the music started slowing down and I was like, oh my God, what is going on in here? 
And then the Lord began to show me what was happening in the spirit realm, in this atmosphere that I could not see with my natural eyes. He was showing me that a nightclub is a place of congregation, just like a church. But in a nightclub, people come there and they're worshiping the devil. They're in unison, they're in sync. And people were dancing, the room is filled with smoke, the music slowed down to demonic, oh, it, it was just eerie. And the people were moving all different ways, but they were moving in unison. People that were dancing on the dance floor. And this lasted maybe a couple of minutes. And then all of a sudden it went away and everything went back to normal. And I said, oh my God, I'm not supposed to be here. And that was the first time that the Lord moved on me in a trance and I was in a public place and I was not living according to the will of God, but he was showing me what I was partaking of, not knowing what you're actually doing when you're in those type of atmospheres and places, just like when Kalinda said about the Travis Scott concert. People thought they were just going to a concert. They didn't know they were going where they were going to have portal, demonic portals open and human sacrifice. If the Lord had opened people's eyes, and I'm sure he opened somebody's eyes in that concert and showed them what was really taking place. They were even sacrificing people. You may sacrifice publicly in front of everybody's face. And it, it, it God is so amazing. And I've had so many people because of their lack of knowledge say God doesn't do that. God doesn't put people in transit states. And, and I understand because everybody don't experience God in that way. And if you have lack of knowledge in that area, when, when God moves on people in a way that is not considered the norm, in a way that is not often taught, people call what they don't understand demonic. And so I've experienced that a lot and it's not demonic. A, a lot of it is God, just like when we see bad things happening in the world. Everybody gives the devil praise. Look what the devil is doing. Look what the devil is doing because it's considered a bad thing. But as you stated, Apostle McCoy, God is in control. Sometimes it's not what the devil is doing. It's what God is allowing the devil to do because he's using the devil for his greater good and his benefit. So I just wanted to say that that is an experience I had with my eyes wide open. I seen it, I was not, my eyes wasn't closed. I didn't see it in my mind. I seen it right before my face. And I was in a backslidden state and the Lord was showing me, you don't belong here. This is what's going on and you cannot see it in the natural, but he showed me in the spirit and it made me think differently about clubbing. Amen. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. Run for us when they give you a warning. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, this is going to kind of help us um, as well with what we're talking about, uh, the trances. So if, um, who up next? Fran, I want to call you. I'm just touching the green that you're, you, you, you're in a stable place and the internet is working fine for you. Talk to me. I'm mute real quick. Let me hear you, precious. Can, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Loud and clear, sweetie. Oh, good, good. My phone was just going bananas. It's okay. But you go, we already know. Ain't nobody mad but the dirt. Come on, let me talk Talk to me. Talk about this. Uh, we're on page 102. If you can go ahead and start reading. Okay. Are we um, what the Bible says about trances? That's correct, sweetie. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. We only see trans trances mentioned five times in the Bible, but that is more than enough to set a per a principle of a way God moves on us and speaks to us. By the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is established. See Deuteronomy 19 and 15. We'll start out with the Old Testament. 
where we see two mentions of trances and then move to the New Testament, where we see trances mentioned three times. Balaam's trance. Balaam, the false prophet who a king tried to hire to curse Israel, went into a trance. We read about that in Numbers 24, 1 through 4. And when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, he went not as at other times to seek for enchantments, but he set his face towards the wilderness. And Balaam lifted up his eyes, and he saw Israel abiding in his tents according to their tribes, and the Spirit of God came upon him. And he took up his parable and said, Balaam, the son of Beor, hath said, and the man whose eyes are open hath said, he hath said, which heard the words of God, which saw the vision of the Almighty, falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. King James Version. Notice when he fell into this trance, his eyes were open. He was not asleep, but it seemed he was in a sleep-like state, not moving. Peter's trance. Peter fell into a trance that opened his eyes to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. Let's look at the entire account in Acts 10, 10 through 17. Then he became very hungry and wanted to eat. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven open and an object like a great sheet bound at the four corners, descending to him and let down to the earth. In it were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. And a voice came to him, to him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything common or unclean. And a vo voice spoke to him again the second time, what God has cleansed, you must not call common. This was done three times, and the object was taken up into heaven again. Now, while Peter wandered within himself, what this vision which he had seen meant, behold, the men who had been sent from Cornelius had made him inquire for Simon's house and stood before the gate. Notice Peter saw a vision in the trance. Many people who fall into trances report having seen visions. Some others can't even describe what they have seen or didn't see anything. Paul's trance. Paul fell into a trance in Acts twenty-two seventeen through 21, in which the Lord gave him a warning and a commission to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. I was in a trance and saw him saying to me, Make haste and get out of Israel or Jerusalem quickly, for they will not receive your testimony concerning me. So I said, Lord, they know that in every synagogue I am I imprison and beat those who believe on you. And when the blood of your uh, of your martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by consenting to his death and guarding the clothes of those who were killing him. Then he said to me, depart, for I will send you far from here to the Gentiles. Notice that Paul got instructions in the trance, just as Peter did. Trances, like any other supernatural encounters, are purposeful. What happens in trances? I've never fallen into a trance but I know people who have, and it's totally biblical. We only see people falling into trance a few times in the Bible, but there is enough evidence from the word of God and from modern expressions to back up this scripture, supernatural experience. Marion Woodrow Ether, a powerful voice from the late 1800s and early 1900s who was moving in the supernatural before Azusa Street or the charismatic movement made it made its mark on church history was known for trances. Indeed, Woodworth 
ether was a Pentecostal forerunner. She saw great outpourings of God's spirit in the Midwest before entering the West Coast to win souls for God. In Oakland, California, she bought an 8,000-seat tent in 1889 and packed it out with people hungry to watch God move. She didn't disappoint. Healing, signs, wonders, and miracles were commonplace in Woodworth Ether's meetings. Of course, miracles always draw crowds and critics, and it was no different for this female pioneer. However, she didn't see the attacks from fellow healing evangelist John Alexander Dowie coming. Dowie himself move, moving in miracles at first praised Woodworth, Woodworth Ether, but soon accused her of propagating a great delusion because people were falling into trances left and right under her tent. He called it trance evangelism. Woodworth Ether also drew attention from the media. The Salem reported documents her falling into a trance on March 24, 1904, and she had to be laid on the platform for over an hour. The, in the Indianapolis Star also reported Woodworth Ether goes into a trance in 1904 edition. In 1913, the Boston Globe reported, took no money for healing. Miss Ether gave God credit for, for cures. There are accounts of Woodworth Ether falling into a trance at a St. Louis meeting and standing like a statue for three whole days as attendees of the World Fair looked on in an amazement. It's not clear if the trance actually lasts that long, but she was known to fall into trances that left her frozen for hours at a time. So did many others who attended her meetings. Pause, sis. Pause, baby. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, who's up next? Uh, oh, let me, Sister Alicia, I think she has the book. Do you have the book, Alicia? Yes, ma'am. Amen. Okay, let me hear from you, sweetie. Thank you. Okay, top of, let me see here. I had my eyes dilated. Let me take these shade things off. <laughs> you sure you were able to read? Yeah, you I had read? them on to protect my eyes from the light, but I realized I couldn't see the book with them on. <laughs> I can see, oh, wow. I can see. I guess Amen. better. Okay. <laughs> It says, people fell into trances, experienced visions of heaven and hell, collapsed on the floor as if they'd been shot or had died. Reports revival a library. Thousands were healed of a wide variety of sickness and diseases. And many believers, even ministers, received mighty baptisms of the Holy Spirit. Often, unbelievers who came in to disrupt the service were encountered by the power of God and themselves fell into a trance. Reporters ridiculed her. Her husband lashed out at her in a public letter. She lost the support of well-known ministers in her day, but she continued preaching the gospel and people continued getting saved and falling into trances. Woodworth Etter pointed people to scriptural references of trances and believed it was the power of God. Criticized in her day, she goes down in Pentecostal history as a pioneer, a forerunner who withstood strong persecution to steward the glory of God in her meetings. We need more like Woodworth Etter in this hour. In the weekly evangel, Robert J. Craig, an early Pentecostal leader and pastor of Glad Tidings Temple in San Francisco, honored her and encouraged ministers to study her life and ministry. If the Pentecostal ministry would study her life and count on God, expecting the supernatural to be revealed in each meeting, what a mighty 
agency, our work, uh, ours would be in the hands of God. Amen. And think about it for a minute. What would happen if skeptics of the gospel entered a Holy Ghost meeting and fell into a trance and saw visions of hell? Maybe trans evangelism isn't such a bad idea. How to enter the trans realm. You cannot choose to enter an ecstatic realm trance any more than you can choose to have a God-inspired dream. Look at the biblical examples. Balaam didn't ask God to bring him into a trance. Peter did not ask God to bring him into a trance. Paul did not ask God to bring him into a trance. It was a God ordained suddenly that they couldn't have expected and one that left a mark on them. Usually people who fall into God given trances are emotional or have strong memories about the experience. Given biblical precedent and the reality of demonic agents who seek to enter trances for wicked purposes, I don't believe we should ask the Lord to put us into trances. God does tell us to pursue spiritual gifts, but a trance is not a gift like the nine gifts of the spirit which was the context by which the holy spirit inspired paul to inspire us to pursue them if we seek supernatural experiences for the sake of supernatural experiences the devil will oblige at the same time we do not want to quench the spirit through fear, unbelief, or doubt. Be open to anything God wants to do for you, give to you, or take from you, and you'll experience everything he has for you in the right time and the right season. Pray this prayer with me. Father, thank you for teaching me about the trans realm. Pause, sis. Sis, pause. So let's repeat. Keep yourself on mute as we repeat uh, what uh, Sister Alicia, go slow though. Don't go fast okay. on it. We're going to repeat after you. All right, sis. Thanks. Thank you. You're welcome. Father, thank you for teaching me about the trans realm. I am open and ready for any realm you want to show me. But I do not want to go where you aren't taking me. Help me not to be deceived by false encounters and demonic realms. Open my eyes only to what you want to show me in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Do y'all hear music or is it me tripping? Hold on. Why am I hearing music of my podcast, y'all? Hold on. Give me a minute. This is so weird, y'all. My podcast. Oh, Lord. I Okay, I don't know how that happened, but for some reason, <laughs> my podcast music, so I play it. I don't know if y'all heard that, but I, did y'all hear that? Oops. 
different. Anyway, oh, don't, don't worry. Oh, okay. We'll, all right. Amen. So, um, wow. Any question? That was very good. That was a very good lesson. Um, amen. Any questions? Anybody want to to share what you learn out of that? Well, I just like to go back to Lisa's question that there's no way to cultivate going into trances. Um, again, as I put in the um, chat, God moves as he wills and he decides uh, when and how that happens, just like he decides um, the times and the seasons. And um, my thing is to just get closer to God, be obedient, um, know that he is one who rewards those who diligently seek him and stay in worship. And the more we run after God and seek God, the more he will reveal himself to us in supernatural, what I call supernatural encounters. I enjoy supernatural encounters. And um, they are a blessing. I know Carlinda, although she probably don't understand it all, and none of us do, because who can understand the mind of Christ? But it is a blessing to experience God through supernatural encounters. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. All right, anybody else? That's good. All right. Amen. Okay, any questions? All right. All right, so I get, I'm assuming this is a very easy, self-explanatory explanatory, uh, explanatory um, of, of lesson that we don't really have to ask, cultivate our relationship with God and receive more. Okay, amen. Okay, well, if that's everybody, I have nothing else to share. Let me get let me get y'all feedback. Is this is this a good book or not? I mean, do you think this is a waste of time or not? I mean, what I want to hear y'all feedback on this because I, I don't I don't want y'all sleeping on the, in the class and saying this is boring. But I hope it's touching home plate with you all. Alicia, go ahead, sweetie. I think this is a fabulous book. I think this is um a book that is timely. Uh, I think this is a time. Uh, where we need to understand, like you were teaching us earlier, who we are, what we carry, how to use it. That's why I recommended that book you were saying, the first one, because if we don't know what we have and how to effectively use it, what good is knowing that heaven is open if you don't know how to access heaven? Yeah, it's open. It's been open. But how you go access it if you don't know who you are and what you got and you don't know how to use it? So, um, that is so very and vitally important in this time because we are moving into new dimensions. We are moving to new elevations and new revelation in God. And we need to know who we are and make our calling and election sure. We need to know what we have. We need to know how powerful it is. And we need to know how to effectively use the Holy Spirit that God has given us because we have access. But if we don't know how to use it, what good is it? And I yield my mic. Amen. All right, anyone else? Anyone else? That was good. That was good. I think it's an awesome book. It's it's a good teaching. It's really opening up some things uh, about the CRM. Uh, many times and often been prophesied to that you are a seer, you are a hearer, and you you just want to know, you know, am I really? Am I really? And uh, and you've experienced something, you know, and I have experienced some things, and you're like, how how do I really uh, get into this? And you may not be functioning and operating in those things. Um, 
while you're in church or, and then sometimes you may have an experience, you may be at the grocery store, you may be at work and God may drop a word in your spirit for someone. And then because you're not walking in it daily or weekly in your spiritual walk, wherever you, wherever you are spiritually, uh, wherever you serve, you are afraid to reach out and really, um, speak that thing, you know, to someone. And so this is, um, this is an excellent book. And then this, ch these chapters touch me because, uh, the, the, the seizure, you know, we, a lot of time we touch on the, 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 the chapter where it's, uh, the, the curse. And, uh, so this really touched when it talked about the aura that touched me, because I wouldn't have thought about that being uh, a dimension of being a seer. So this chapter really touched me uh, and that that opened up some because that's something that still happens to me. And that's something that's fearful to my family because they're steady watching me like, oh, my God, something's wrong with you. Something's going to happen. And, you know, I mean, I'm under close watch, you know, sometimes I can't even laugh and have fun because that's, that's something that was like, you know, an outrageous laugh that I was going into an attack and, you know, but, you know, I'm under close watch if they see me staring afar and it's really a trance and, and God was starting to reveal because I, I just had, you know, I say a thought, but Holy Spirit was revealing to me that this is something spiritual because I was starting to see things, you know, I could, like I said, I could be in a crowded room and I would be veering, you know, like I'd be veering off into a trance and, you know, I'm, it's like, I'm seeing things afar off when people around me close loud music or whatever's going on in the atmosphere seems so far off and, God showing me something else in a in a trance, you know, even if it's for a few seconds or a moment. So this is a very, very good book. It opened up something that I just, you know, it's just opening up a new realm in my life. And I just thank God for it. It's been a blessing to me. I got to catch up next week because I hate I miss it. I, you just don't know how bad I was to be next week, last week. <laughs> Oh, my internet went down doing work at one o'clock and it did not come back up to probably after 2 40 in the morning <laughs> wow she sure did she told me that i started to tell her go to mcdonald's don't go to, uh, uh starbucks all these uh, i don't know so i've been <laughs> using their internet like, I'll do it in a minute. I'll call my neighbor. I mean, call my mom. My sister literally stay around the corner. I'm like, look, y'all lecture it out. Because, you know, we, yes. A bread company. Hey, man, at least you said. <laughs> no, I know that's right. Go to the bread company. Hey, Amen. Sit on the parking lot of the bread company. You ain't got to go inside. You know what I'm saying? Just connect there. That's Amen. what that's what Amen. I'm doing. I went to my neighbor's house. I went See? to the library and and I was going everywhere. <laughs> it just kept kicking me out until I got home. And and I prayed with my daughter and finally I'm I'm connected now. But um I'll, I'll thank God for the playback. And I totally believe that this book is completely helpful because in my community, I um, came across a new ager and um, she was talking about, you know, crystals and spirit guides. And I don't really know much about the just what we've been reading. And Holy Spirit started speaking to me about um you know, like what they believe about spirit guides and healing and stones. And um, she kind of stumbled and revealed to me where part of the river where these ladies go. And, um, you know, she just kind of started really revealing some things to me. And then later on, you know, as Holy Spirit was talking to me, um, reading this book, um, you know, how the enemy mimics everything that's happening in this book. And it and it sounds so familiar because we're reading about it. We're reading about um, 
you know, the, the, the seer dimensions and how um, Holy Spirit speaks to you and how, um, how the Holy Spirit reveals, um, you know, as your discernment is sharpened. So if the new agers and people that believe in spirit guides are really into, um, are really into, you know, their supernatural and where we, as the, as, as the body of Christ, you know, we're against each other. We're fighting each other saying, you know, the Holy Spirit's not real. The trances are not real. This dimension is not real. And it's like, we're so divided and the enemy's kingdom is so united in what they believe. And it's like, no wonder we can't, we can't have, we can't come together to make signs, miracles, and wonders happen. And, um, and I was, and I just sat there and I listened and I, and I asked her, you know, why is this so important to her? Why is this spirit guide stuff? And, and why is it so important to you? And she just said, you know, well, that's what I want to, what does she said? Something like, I want to be me and to be able to be in control. And it was all about control. And I, and I mentioned to her, well, the last person that wanted to be in control and went, you know, went against, um, uh, you know, what, uh, against authority that made heaven and earth got cast out. And then, and then she said, well, um, that, that's, that's all a myth and that don't make sense. And I told her, I said, I said, well, you know, the gospel has been proven over and over and over and over for centuries. And then she said something like the Bible is, you know, in many different translations. I'm like, yeah, but they all say the same thing. No matter the translation, it all says the same thing that Christ is Lord. And um, and I I don't know nothing about the new age except what we've been taught. Um, on Thursdays and the Holy Spirit was just down, just dropping things into my spirit. And I knew I was, I'm sowing seeds into her life to speak the truth, the way and the light. And, and the only thing I kept hearing from her was, I want to be in control. I want to control what I do, what I say. And I, and I'm, and I was telling her the last person that did that or thought that way was cast out of heaven. So this book is so inform it 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 just shines God's light and his glory on what the enemy is mimicking and if you don't know if you don't know about this realm you know the enemy will come at you and test you and see if you know that you know and and I just love that I sowed seeds into her and I was talking to her and and um, I just hope she comes back to me and she starts asking me more questions about Christ. And um, so, yeah, this this book is very it, 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 it's, it's like a instruction. It's like a manual. And then when you go to God's word and it's so the impartation, like when people start actually coming to you and asking you questions, um, the impartation that takes place to 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 win souls out of the darkness because they're so misguided they're so deceived they're so they just don't know they just don't know and my heart just went out to her because she was so deceived she was she was talking about spirit guides and I told her I said I said um I know, I said, at the end of all this, I said, do you have, and Holy Spirit said to me that she has bad dreams, that she's being tormented in her dreams. And I asked her if she was having bad dreams. I asked her if her dreams were um, not the best. And she said, how, how, how do you know? And I said, it usually doesn't end well for people because it's deception. So, oh, Jesus. So. So be ready, be ready. They'll, they're going to start coming to you and start asking and, and talking about, you know, deception and angel of light. And, and, um, I was so glad I spoke to her and sowed, sowed seeds of, of, 
of God's love that that she can be free from from that demonic um that demonic misguide and deception that the enemy shows himself as an angel of light and he also can you know introduce spirit guides and I said no that that's 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 not that's a demon so thank you so much for this teaching you know God says the word says you know my people perish for lack of knowledge and and I just thank God for this book and all, everyone who comes and and um, sow seeds their time. Amen. 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 That's good. And good. And also, I want to also personally thank everybody what she just said to sow and seed. We thank y'all. You all have uh, sown the seed to the ministry to allow us to a brow. Um, to just be able to enlarge, to enlarge uh, the territory God has got, uh, gave us uh, permission and uh, favor to do. So I thank God for every seed, and no matter if it's small, big, we just, we're thankful. We're truly thankful for it. It keeps, it keeps you know, us to, you know, reach, reach the nation. Amen. So that's a blessing. Um you know, when Fran said that, you know, my, my spirit, I, my heart was vexed as well. My heart was just deeply torn when I was speaking to a young lady um, myself. And and like she said, DC, they, they, they're so, the, gener, the generation is so headstrong, so rebellion, so much stubbornness where if the truth would bite them right then and there, they wouldn't, they still wouldn't see it. They still wouldn't see it. You know, and then how they will put in, well, I, I serve the higher power. I serve the, uh, the universe, the uh, creator of the universe. And, and, and I pray and, and I, I say in Jesus name and, but then you doing things like burning sage to get rid of bad evil uh, energy, and but you do, you 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 wear these crystals, and because they 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 some for protection, some for healing, for whatever reason. So those are idols that you are allowing to bow down to and worship, you know. So we 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 gotta be careful, you know, because you you hold up, friend, who. So you gotta think about that. These, you know, we can we can give the word, sow that seed, and pray that God, of course, would give the increase, and pray that they will, Lord, would bring them to Christ. And he he's as he said, once one waters the seed, one you know one you know God is gonna do the increase. You know, so we just pray <laughs> amen we just pray that you know that folks eyes be open you know because we are literally you know people was like well how do i know your god is real i heard this one lady said well the king james version bible was written by a white man and and all that you know and 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 but they read other books and they believe in demonic i'm just gonna say it demonic books that read those type of books and over the word of god that you know take heed to that quicker and that's just what shows you in the times that we live in it that the that mankind will believe the uh lie opposed to the truth mm, my god my god so we, we got to continue to pray. God, give us wisdom and words of knowledge to be able to penetrate the heart of man. Because you thinking about th those hearts is stony hearts that that's hearts been heartened towards God because people looking like, you know, I tried. I've been in church all my life. I was churchy going and everything. Now I'm 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 found something else that seems to work for me and when Fran said that and that's 
that's any type of being in deliverance. When we have to do deliverance on people that has dealt in that new age practice, they're automatically going to be tormented. I'm telling you, the demons going to oppress you, depress you, do what torment you the whole nine. You think you're going to, you, you, you think you're going to work for the devil and, and, and get out scot-free. Do you really, really think that? Oh my God, he'll lay all aside of you, the riches, the money, cars, material things. But is it worth losing your soul? Is it worth going to hell for? My God. So I, 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 I definitely understand, you know, that this is, God, you got to give us that you know, words to say to touch your people, you know, because you, you, you would never got, I mean, he didn't send Jesus for nothing, you know, he didn't, you know, for us to, for, for us to have eternal life with him, it was a reason behind that. Amen. Oh, amen. Anybody else? Anybody else? Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Well, my phone nope. keeps connecting to uh, my earbuds. I'm so sorry. Um, I, okay, I just, the Holy Spirit had just brought to my attention one thing. Um, when I was talking to her, she mentioned um, some name. She kept saying, according to, oh, I can't remember. It's just like right there, but I can't, I can't say his name. And, and she said, and she was telling me, you know, like, um, he was in a trance when he, he, he wrote a book and Holy Spirit said to me, the person that wrote that book was high on drugs and tripping while he wrote that book. And I, and I told her, I said, I said, well, a person who's high and and thinks he's in he's on earth but he's in a realm where demons are giving him information is not something you want to be reading and she looked at me and she said have you read the book and i said no i have no idea who you're talking about but that was just what holy spirit said to me a word of knowledge and i told her you do not want to be reading a book by a man. I can't remember his name. She, she said his name. And I said, you don't want to be reading a book that was written by a man that was on drugs and in a trance. And this information was given to him by a demon. And she kind of looked at me like, have you read the book? And I said, no. No, I, I have no idea who you're talking about, but it's it never ends well. So, so these these I I think they're weapons, you know, to fight, to fight and win souls and to snatch them back, um, and and you know to snatch these people out, um, out of the darkness, and. And it, 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 even I was surprised. I was like, oh, do, do I say this? <laughs> so, you know, when you're, when you're just, when your discernment is sharpened and God shows you and Holy Spirit shows you, you know, it, it's to, it's to sow seeds into that person of their deception in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. When when you ever, so you look for the red flags, and 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 I think two things she has said. The young lady said, "I want to be in control." So we got I. Here's I. With the, and, she, and 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 I. We already know the ring leader of I is pride. Then you got control. Oh my God, Jezebel. So. That's in the Marina Kingdom within this cell. That is Jezebel and Pride. They work hand in hand. You follow me? 
So my God. So when, you know, so when people, you know, talk and oh, I heard a person say, I love your energy. What, what energy is you talking about? Energy drink? I love your vibe. We didn't have we these these are new age words that's now all of a sudden coming out because 40, 50 years ago we didn't hear that. I don't know, maybe y'all did, but I, I don't remember. Maybe I wasn't paying attention, but those are red flags when I hear people say those type of things. Now, what happened to the Holy Spirit is leading me or the uh or my discernment I'm picking up in my spirit that I'm discerning that, you know, you, 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 you are missing something, you know, you, you really, and, and when people are missing something, they, they, that's why a lot of times they dibbing and dabbing in all kinds of different things because they curious. And then, oh, you got a friend that introduced you to this. Oh, this is oh, them church folks. They don't know what they're doing. They just a bunch of uh, hypocrites. Da 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 da. You know the the deception that the enemy is portraying. You know to in you know put that you know uh, in 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 influence them that that as we believers we don't know what we're talking about. And, amen. That was good. I think Alicia said the culture is being influenced in the language by Babylon. That's correct. Egypt and Solomon and Gomorrah. That is absolutely right. On point. Yes, ma'am. I, I totally agree. So um, we we seeing what what aspired in the Bible. Okay. People are going to be lovers of themselves. Amen. Anybody else before we get started? I mean, get started. I mean, in. Oh, Lord. Amen. Sorry about that. All right. Well, if no one else have anything to say, uh, friend, would you please be so kind to pray us out? Guys, listen, next week, um, what, well, Liz had to leave. So the video, um, make sure y'all have the video for chapter 11 and 12. We're going to talk about the out of body dimension and the secret uh dimension so um the video um you should have is uh i think it's my encounter with jesus and my angel with kenneth hagan okay that is the video for next week class amen all right well praise god i thank god for all of you amen um this this is a blessing all right, Sister Fran, if you can be so kind, Minister Fran, pray us out if you would. Thank you. God bless. Amen. <clears throat> Father, we just thank you, God. We just thank you for this time where we can sit at your feet, Father God. Father God, that we can sit in an atmosphere, Father God, where, where we yield, Father God, our heart, where we yield, Father God, our mind in Jesus' name. Father God, that we continue, God, to keep our eyes on you. Father God, that you continue, Father God, to download and pour into each and every one of us, God. That, Father God, that we are, that we, Father God, are not, are not ignorant, Father God, of the enemy's devices in Jesus' name. But, Father God, that we are equipped, Father God, with Holy Spirit. Spirit. We are equipped, Father God, that the 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 the, uh, the prayers, Father God, in Jesus' name, God, that Father God, that you have made that you have made available, Father God, the the angel armies, Father God, when 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 Father God, we we seek, Father God, assistance, Father God, in Jesus' name, God, Father God, let us be, Father God, real, let us be real in the spiritual kingdom, God, your kingdom, God, that Father God, that we can see, we can hear, we. We can smell and we can sense, Father God. Father God, that that we use it as 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 to evangelize, Father God, in Jesus' name, God. That Father God, we pluck, Father God, we snatch them out of the kingdom of darkness in Jesus' name, God. That Father God, that we when we come, Father God, we come in Jesus' name. That we deliver in Jesus' name, God. That Father God, we come, Father God, Father God, for your Father God, we come for your glory. We come in your glory in Jesus' name. 
we come, Father God, from your kingdom, God, that, Father God, we are seated, God, in heavenly places, in Jesus' mighty name, God, that, Father God, if God is for us, God, who can be against us in Jesus' name, God? We thank you for your kingdom. We thank you for the angel armies. We thank you for prayer in Jesus' name, God. We thank you for the seers and the prophets, God. We thank you, Father God, for, for Father God, those that you have entrusted to have trance and visions, Father God, for your glory in Jesus' name, God. Who is this King of glory? Who is this man of, who is this man, Father God, who commands, Father God, the angel armies, God, who sets the suns in place, who sets the moon in place and the, and the waves, Father God, obey him in Jesus' name, God. We thank you, Father God, that you are the King of kings, that you, Father God, reign in Jesus' name, God. We say, let your kingdom come, God. Let your will be done, Father God. Let us be, Father God, as we bring as we bring heaven to earth, Father God, in Jesus' name, God. We thank you that you are equipping us. You, we thank you, Father God, that we are not ignorant in Jesus' name, as we yield to Holy Spirit, as we yield, Father God, and that we love you, God, for with all of our mind, all of our hearts, Father God, and we obey your commandments in Jesus' mighty name, God. We thank you, Father God, that you have set, Father God, our feet on solid ground, that we are unmovable and unshakable, Father God, in Jesus' name, God. Let our light shine in the darkness, God. Let us be, Father God, the salt of this earth in Jesus' name. Let us come with boldness, Father God, to speak your word, Father God. Father God, sprinkled with, with salt and love in Jesus' name. Those that seek that are seeking love, those, Father God, that have been deceived, those, Father God, Father God, that we snatch them out of darkness in Jesus' mighty name, God. And we come, Father God, we come, Father God, equipped with love in Jesus' name, God. We thank you for this class, God. We thank you for Apostle McCoy, God. Pour back into her, God, as she's poured out, Father God, into each and every one of us, God. We thank you for your love. We thank you, Father God, for your kingdom, Father God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Bless his name. Hey, my God. I'm not finna start. No, um, we ain't finna go. I'm I'm going. I'm going to bed, friend, because you know we I'm I'm about I'm I'm right right now stirred up. I ain't gonna lie. I'm like, let's do it. But I gotta get up early, guys. I love you. I love you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen.